Hi everyone, this is Mustafa Adam here at Western Illinois University Computer Science Department. Graduate student, today I'll be talking about Chapter 9, Security of Distributed System Class. Um, chapter 9 will be cover four point, Introduction to Security, and then the three point, which the book divided the security in distributed system into three parts. The first part will be handling secure channel between process or user and that will be by handling authentication and dealing with encryption and then the second one is access control and this dealing with authorization by giving the the, authent the already authenticated user in the system a certain permission for certain resources and the last part was which is security management and this it's a service for the first and the second part uh, and here particularly we will be talking about key distribution and removing and adding user to the system uh, in the introduction we will be talking about the security thread and then we will briefly mention the mechanisms that we have and after then we will go into details um, and then we'll talk about policy and um, we have one example here the books mention uh, which is global security architecture we will talk about that just in a moment in the security thread I'll be talking about these four points that generally exist in security Interception, it's referred to situation where an unauthorized party has gained access to service or data. Interruption referred to situation in which service or data become unavailable. And we could mention here denial of service also and distributed denial of service. Modification, it involves unauthorized change of data. Uh, fabrication, it refers to the situation in which additional data or activity are generated that would normally not be exist. For example, an intruder may attempt to add an entry into a password file or database. And we could also mention here a reply attack, it could be one of the fabrication that could be happen here so uh, here we have four mechanisms that we can use to help us again a security threat and to help us to enforce security policy uh, first one encryption and that by transferring the data into something an attacker cannot understand and that simply will help us against interception and modification Authentication, it's used to verify the claimed ID identity of a user to server or vice versa. After doing authentication, it's necessary to check whether that client is authorized to perform the action requested and that by means of authorization. Auditing, it's making log of, of every action and that will not help us in any uh, against any security threat however it will help us in analysis in security breach here i'll be talking about security policy in distributed system and it's very important to understand exactly what need to be protected and what the assumption are with respect to security for security policy regarding the distributed system, we will find that distributed system will cover policy for inter-domain communication and that what global security architecture describes. And it does has eight statements. Um, I'm not going into details here, but I'm going to mention these eight statements and I think it's, um, it's, it would be clear just by mentioning them. The environment consists of multiple domain. Local operations are subject to local domain security policy only. Global operations require the initiator to be known in each domain where, where the operation is carried out. 
Operation between entity in different domain require mutual authentication. And the five uh, global author authentication replace local authentication. Controlling access to resources is subject to local security only. Seven user can delegate right to process. And eight a group of process in the same domain can share credential. Uh, as I just mentioned, it's very important to understand that distributed system will take care of policy only between inter-domain communication, will not take care of local security policy for certain domain. So um, here we have example, we have a three domain, each domain had its local security policy and that would not be regard to distributed system security policy. So the global security architecture statement, the eight statement we have discussed and mentioned will be implemented by mean of four protocol. And these four protocols simply, the first protocol will create a user proxy for the user that wants to communicate other dom resource in other domain. So the second protocol will simply allocate allocation of resource by the user in the remote domain and that by handling the resource proxy on the remote, remote domain. The third protocol simply will request a resource for the client on behalf of the client that requesting the, the resource on the remote domain. So this remote domain it will request another service on other domain on behalf of that client by using the client credential. Uh, and the fourth protocol simply by making the user known in the remote domain and that's simply by mapping the global id to local id at this point i'll be talking about building secure channel and as i mentioned earlier it's required that to handle authentication and message integrity and confidentiality so here i'll be talking about authentication and we have three kind of authentication that the book mentioned based on shared secret key and using distribution center and using public key. Here the first one, based on the shared secret key, we will assume Bob and Alice have already shared a secret key and Alice wants to communicate with Bob but at the same time making sure she actually will talk to Bob. So she sent a challenge key, Bob replied back by message content RB. Alice at this point encrypted the RB by the session key that they already shared to Bob. So Bob, when he get this message decrypted, that he will make sure he will he actually talking to Alice because Alice the only one can encrypt this message by that key. Uh, at the same time here, Alice sent RA to Bob to challenge him back. So what Bob does, um, Bob encrypt the message that she sent uh, and send it to her and at this point Alice by decrypting the message will make sure she actually talk to Bob and here the connection is built and will continue from here. Uh, this um, scenario or mechanism it suffer in regarding the distributed system it suffer from scalability problem where you have to have a secret key connection with every single node in the system and it start getting very, very large when you have too many nodes in the system. So the better one is having a distribution um, center key. Uh, distribution center key, you need to have only N connection with every node have secret key with the distribution center. So, um, if anyone wants to communicate with any other one, what it does, for example, Alice wants to build a secure connection with Bob, she requests 
from the distribution center to build a connection stating that her identity and the other one the other part identity the distribution center what it does it will send back a session key for both of them that Alice requested to build that connection and that will be encrypted by everyone a shared key with the distributed center for example here we'll send it by encrypting it by the secret key that's already shared between Alice and distributed center and here also will send by the encrypted by the key that shared between Bob and distributed center and we will have an example here just at the um, at the moment uh, we will have a look at Kerberos distribute um, Kerberos authentication system as if it it's one of the using the key distribution center concept authentication using public key is very sim fairly simple since everyone or every part have the other one public key and everyone has its own private key so Alice has Bob, Bob public key and, and she can verify that and she want to build a connection with Bob at the same time she want to verify herself to Bob usually Bob it would be a well known for example server or for example any service and everyone can verify his public key by using a certificate so Alice will will send a request containing her public key and along with that a message encrypted by Bob public key so Bob got that and sent back a message containing RA that sent by Alice and RB requesting to challenge Alice to reply back to confirm that she actually the owner of that public key because this is encrypted by the key that she sent so and along with that she he sent a session key to communicate afterward between them so Alice she replied back uh, of his message by encrypting by the session key that he sent and that at that point the connection built and they will start communicate using that session key second part of building secure channel is by encryption we have two type of encryption symmetric crypto system and asymmetric crypto system in symmetric crypto system the key that will use to encrypt and decrypt the message are the same while in the asymmetric crypto system are different you would encrypt by key and decrypt by other key symmetric crypto system example which is this algorithm it stand for data encryption standard it's operate on 64 bit block of data use 16 round using fistel block cipher and see just in a moment what the fistel block cipher look like simple and difficult to break using analytic method because the structure that's been built upon which is festal block cipher brute force attack easy to break because and that's simply because the key is very um, small size which is 64 bit a new version of this which is trouble this the only difference is they increase the key size so that's uh, uh, brute force attack cannot be happening here the um, the fistal block cipher look like this is a steel round that the desk go through and in every round this is what happened which is right here divide it into half and then do this operation and then in every round and that's why it's hard to break using analysis method asymmetric crypto system which is RSA it's called after the people that found it and the way that's in compute to come up by the two key which is the public key and private key added known 
choosing two very large primal Ryan number B and Q then compute N which is B multiply by Q and then Z which is as it shows uh, choose number D which is will be our public key join with D uh, relatively prime to Z then compute the number E such that E multiplied by D equal 1 mod Z and this first step it's simply very simple it take advantage of primary numbers and mod operation and it comes by these two key which is public key and private key so the private key is join of N and E and the public key is D and N and if you encrypt the message using the private key you can decrypt it using the public key and if you encrypt the message using the public key you can decrypt it using the private key so it's it's two-way encryption and decryption but you cannot do two operation with one key um, and private key the only person that know is the person but the public key will be public for everyone as the certificate for every website has been published um, the encryption is very easy here how the encryption happened you will take the message powered by E and mod multiply by mod of N and that what it give you the cipher which is the encrypted message to decrypt this cipher you will take the cipher and power it by n and then mod n it will give you the message that's encrypted before so it, it's relatively simple but as it as it shows here it take a lot of power to compute not the mod operation but the power operation hash function is one way encryption and it's compute 128 bit fix message uh, digits uh, I, it will take um, I arbitrary lens binary as an input uh, we will use the public key and private key to compute what we call a digital signature and that's simple because encryption itself all the encryption doesn't guarantee the logic of the data if we take this example for example we have Alice want to send message to Bob for example buying something for example buying shoes by certain money for Alice to make sure that Bob doesn't will change that amount and for Bob also for him to make sure that Alice will not refuse that she make that offer by doing digital signature and here what it happened uh, using Alice private key to, de in to encrypt the message then using Bob public key to encrypt it so we need some sort of confidentiality to the message so we'll send this and then what Bob do Paris will use his private key to decrypt it because that what's last things been encrypted and then using Alice public key to encrypt the message and that will make and that will give him the M and also just to mention here also Alice will send the message so we'll compare this if the same this mean the message has been sent from Alice because the message has been decrypted by Alice public key uh, relatively this is take a lot of power to do because as we mentioned um, the computation for this it will be like power of the E and D so the message could be very large so this will take a lot of computation this in the second picture this what happened it's coming by the idea to make it simple of computation by using the hash function to generate hash of m first and then encrypt that hash and then send the message along with the encrypted hash so what it happened here is the reverse which is uh, decrypt the hash and then compute the hash of the message and here we'll compare them if our 
equal did this mean this message has been sent from Alice the use of public and private key will show us here by when we get to calculate the digital signature and will show and will show up also when we uh, distribute the key between the two parties so here we want to send message with some sort of signature that's along with it so this is a message and then we will calculate the signature here by anchored by Alice private key and here just for confidentiality we're using Bob public key to do so here when the pop get the message along with the signature what it does is decrypt the message by its private key because it was encrypted by its public key and then decrypted by Alice public key and then here we'll get the message compare these two matter if they're equal that's mean this message come from Alice and this is a signature and he can claim that anytime in the future and this is what happened with banking online transaction all these things will be on the record if anything happened we'll get back to it and see the signature uh, here it take a lot of computation as we mentioned as um, uh, asymmetric key encryption goes so better way to do this by using the hash because hash relatively simple to compute and easy and very small so you will take the hash of the message rather than encrypting the whole message you just encrypt the hash for that message and then send it along with the hash and then do the same here uh, calculating the hash and decrypt the, uh, the hash here the encrypted hash and compare and if it's okay this this signature for this message and this can be in the record for future for claiming that this method by this mean has been sent and no one can um, change his mind after that because there is a signature along with the message in the record uh, here I'll be talking about Kerberos which is one of the key distribution center example for authentication so uh, it's a network authentication developed by MIT in 80s in 1980s um, using a secret key based service for providing authentication in open network so in Latin language Kerberos mean the dog with three head uh, here the Kerberos functionality and Kerberos consists of three part uh, we show here two part we don't show the third part which, which is a service that um, Alice wants to communicate we have here the user that utilize the service and we have the authentication servers here which is this uh, distribution center the key distribution center consists of two parts the authentication server and ticketing granting server and here assume we have service that Alex want to utilize so to, to for Alex to gain access here it has to verify himself here and gain ticket to access this service so here first Alex will log in by sending his email for example uh, just his email without password for authentication server authentication server will reply back if it's already in the system by this information encrypted by this key which is will be the Alex password so to for Alex to open this message has to enter his password which is K A A S so after entering his part of password he get a key between him and ticketing granting server and the ticket that will give to the ticket granting server to verify himself so after getting this he will then communicate um, by the way the Alice workstation is just we can assume this it's just a proxy that's a workstation that Alex into so uh, Alex will communicate the ticket granting server by the ticket which is this part sending the ticket and sending where he wants to log in or communicate not login but where he wants to gain access and then here it just time is time for preventing reply attack uh, ticket granting server look 
into his database if he has permission he will send back this ticket so this ticket is actually the granting ticket for the service that Alex wants to gain so here the it's uh, encrypted by KATGS that's already been sent by um, a authentication server and we have to mention also there is key shared between a authentication server and ticketing granting server and that was what the ticket was encrypting off of so and we have also a a key between ticketing granting server and the server that Alex wants to gain access to so the ticket contain the 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 key the key that will be between a Alex and the service that will want to communicate and having B also the address for example of B of the service that want to communicate and here is a ticket that will be sent to a B server that Alex wants to communicate which is contains this part which is will be opened by B by the key that's shared between the B server and ticketing grounding server oh. so Alex will get this finally and send this ticket to the server that wants to utilize and then gain the access because the ticket granting server give him ticket to access that service and here is some reference that I used uh, thank you for watching and have a great day